Hello, my name is Gary Ford. I'm working with ARCHICAD 17 and I'm going to demonstrate one method of how to build a railing uh, for a set of winder stairs. But the first thing to do is really to come in. I suggest setting your balusters all in position, getting the layout worked out because we're going to need the hot spots at each baluster. What I've used for my balusters uh, because I really need this hot spot in the center is I use just an ARCHICAD basic shape. Well, let's look at that in 3D. So you can see here I already have the balusters in position. They're all sitting in their correct place. Uh, set the balusters in position. Set the polyline in position. I have a, a node at every um, baluster and I use this to adjust uh, the curve that I want to see and plan for the um, finished product. I'll be using this uh, polyline to judge the correct shape of the, of the morph. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, go back to 3D and I'm going to draw the morph line. I'm going to turn on the Morph tool. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. I'm going to do a little short line to start with. Double click to end it. Um, and I'm going to, because uh, I want really him to start over here against this column. Turn the white one on. I can click this node. And now I can move him around. So what I want to do is constrain him. And I want him up against the column here. That's where I'm going to start my rail at this position right here. Pick up this end. And I'm going to bring him, go ahead and drop him right there in the center. Oops. Now let's turn on that line tool. I've seen video clips of people working the morphs and using editing planes and doing their curves as they're working in 3D. And there's times that I've been able to do that, but this just gets real complicated and it's not worth the effort, at least at this point, to, to deal with that. It's easy enough to do in plan and section. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to hit the center points. Of most of these guys. Yeah, we are. This starting with this step, it's a straight run. And so I'm going to not set points on all of them. End up on this one right here. I can always add points later if I decide I need it. The reason I want a node at most of these points, particularly the ones that are going to be on a radius, is that after I've finished setting the elevation for all of these points in section and in 3D, then I will go back to plan and I'll use the polyline to set the uh, curves. I'll match the morph to the shape of the polyline. So there's my 3D morph line. Back to plan. Eyeball it to see if I've hit most of the center points. Well, actually, I'm probably not even seeing the morph. Let's move this polyline out of the way. Oh, let's turn this guy back on. Let's move this out of the way over here. And let's find my morph. He's behind. Let's go to this section. I'll show you what you do at this point. Here's my straight run. I don't need to do anything there, but I have to figure out how to get a nice slope up to the top. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to move these guys up until it looks right. I'll move some of them down. Just keep in mind when you're when you're doing this for real, you have to keep your your code-driven railing 
maximum and minimum heights above the tread in mind. And surprisingly, when it looks good in section, it typically looks good in 3D. Who would have thought? So I'm going to go around adjusting these guys. Okay, close that section. And I'm going to open this section. And do the same thing over here. So you get the idea. As I'm going to adjust all of these guys so that they're touching on the morph line. So the really nice thing about these, I've had the hot spot in the middle, which is you just have to have. They stretch nicely. Uh, I get some feedback when I hit the, the morph line, so I know where to stop. Works pretty well. Sometimes coming from above, it's hard to find that uh, sweet spot. It's easier to go below and come back up. Okay. I think normally I would have, have, a, have it dying to a baluster, but this is good enough for the demonstration. So I feel pretty good about that as a whole. That's not an unreasonable flow. And the next thing is to uh, build the uh, profile for the railing. So let's um, go back to uh, plan. You can build a morph in uh, section or elevation that you're going to extrude uh, for something that you're going to see running horizontal in plan. Here's the shape of the railing cap. I created a fill for the shape that I want. You could just use a polyline. It doesn't have to be a fill. Whenever the morph is closed on itself, it still creates a surface, whether it's a polyline or a fill. So you uh, create the uh, fill. You turn on the morph tool. Again, make sure you're not in the rotate mode. Morph tool. And hold down the uh, spacebar. Turn on the uh, magic wand. Magic wand, it, it turns into a morph. Let's just do it as usual. You saw a little feedback there. Sometimes you really don't know. There's the morph. I've already done it right here. Delete this guy. So here he is. Here's the morph I just created for the handrail. Get out of elevation. Go back to plan. Remember that the morphs I create in that elevation are going to be are going to be in the elevation. Here he is. And I'll take the middle of him. I'm going to put him right here. And I'm going to turn on the line, the morph line, and the railing profile. I'm going to view them in 3D. So he's way down here. I need to bring him up. Hold down the shift key, shift key to constrain him. Bring him up here. And. What I'll move this guy down, put him right on the line. That's where I want him to be. And the rest of this I do in 3D. So let's let's go to my 3D view. And here he is right here. So with the um, blue tooltip active. What you've got to do is you have to associate what you're trying to do, which is extrude the morph with following the polyline. It's kind of a two-step process, and it's touchy. You can't click down here where you want it to follow because you're going to get the morph polyline every time. So you've got to click on the edge of this morph until you get the pet palette up, and you need to choose this tube. 
Okay, after you choose the tube, it's ready to extrude, except it doesn't really know. It's just extruding in a straight line. Now you have to associate with the point right here. You see, when, I'm, when I get, I can find that little, it'll just jump all around, but eventually you can, you can get it to attach itself to that point, and you click. And now I'm pulling from that point. This is absolutely critical. You cannot do any of this if you don't master that one little technique. This is a straight run until I get to um, this point right here. There's a hot spot there. Click. Now I'm going to turn it to uh, radius. And af after this, I have to do a double click, or the morph just spazzes out on you, and you're going to have to start over. So double click at every point. Click, click. Click, click. Since all of these have a little bit of a radius to it, I'm leaving the radius on. We're going to worry about that in plan later. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. Click, click. If you mess up, you have to start over. Click, click. Still on a radius. Click, click. Click, click. There's my first full step. There is not a follow me function like SketchUp has where you just say, hey, head down this polyline and extrude. That would be way too simple for GraphSoft go one more and then at this point it's a straight run so I'm going to change to the, uh, the straight run and I'm going to take it all the way down to to right here and go back to the circle click click it's a real pain to get this far to get to click click if you do a single click and try to move it, you're pretty well screwed. Okay, um, I still have the arc option on. And I'm still trying to remember to double click. It really wants to spaz out. See if I can nail the end of this now. Right there. And then one more click at the end. Three clicks to finish. So let's select this morph and bring him to the front. There. There we go. And let's see what this guy looks like in 3D. Nice profile. that bad. Walking down the stairs. See these guys you could raise up a little bit more and then boolean them and they look perfect. So I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right there. Just to recap, set your bolsters in position, have them all at the same height, set them uh, on the landings and the st in all of the treads, open up your sections, work out your uh, your morph to polyline, and then uh, create your pattern for your rail. Extrude it. Go back to plan and adjust the uh, the angles. So there you go. That's it. Have fun.